Arrays are one of the most common types of data that we work with in our code. In fact, we work with them so often that PHP has many built-in functions that work explicitly with arrays. And in order to write clean and clear code, every PHP developer needs to know how to use at least the most common functions. I am Jeremy McPeak for Envato Touch Plus, and I am going to show you how you can use some of PHP's common array functions in this tutorial. But first, if you are looking to create a professional website or you want to add features to make your website stand out, then head over to Code Canyon, the marketplace for high quality JavaScript and PHP components, HTML5 and mobile templates, and so much more. The items at Code Canyon can help you easily add the functionality and eye-popping visuals that you need to meet your business's goals. You'll find a massive library that contains thousands of JavaScript and PHP components and almost 20,000 HTML and mobile templates. Needless to say, you'll find what you're looking for to take your site to the next level. We're going to begin with the basics, and we will start by creating an array. And really, there are two primary ways that we create arrays. The first is to use the array function and then pass in the values that you want that array to have. This is the traditional way of creating an array. And some people prefer this approach because it's very clear as to what you are doing. You are creating an array with these values. However, in PHP 5, a new syntax was introduced using square brackets. And this is very reminiscent to JavaScript so that you no longer have to use the array function to create an array. You can simply use the brackets, specify the values that you want that array to contain, and you end up with a bona fide array. There's virtually no difference between either approach. You end up with an array. It simply comes down to style and what your preference is. Now, every array is essentially a set of key value pairs. When you don't specify a key, the key for that array is a numeric value starting at zero and then incrementing from there. So if we wanted to get the value of 10, then we would use the key of zero. We could also use the term index and that will give us the value of 10. If we wanted to get the value of apple, then we would use the key of one. However, whenever we create an array, we have the opportunity to define the keys that we want those values to have. Although we don't have to specify a key if we don't want to. So in this case, we're going to essentially have the same array that has the same values, but they're going to have different keys. So that the first value, 10, is gonna have a key of zero, but then Apple is going to have a key of five. The value of 20 is gonna have a key of two, and then the value of negative 18 is going to have a key of six. Now we'll talk about that here in a moment, but then monkey will have a key of seven. So let's write that out so that we have zero, five, two, six, and seven. So when you don't specify a key, the system is going to take the highest numeric key, which in our case is five, because that is what we used for the key of Apple. It's going to add one, and then that is going to be the new key. So that is why the value of negative 18 has a key of six, and monkey has a key of seven. Now, most of the time, whenever we create an array that has a key and a value, we know what those keys and values are. So let's say that we have an array where the key is going to be something in our world, and then the value is going to be the color for that. So in this case, the key is going to be sky, the value is going to be blue. Then we will have a key of grass, which is going to be green, although if you live where I live, it's mostly brown. And then we'll have a key of orange, which there's really only one thing that is orange, and that is, well, an orange. However, there are times when you will have two separate arrays. One will contain the keys, which in our case is sky, grass, and orange. And then we would have another array for the values, which of course is going to be blue, green and orange. And we would want to combine those into an array where the keys are sky, grass, orange, the values are blue, green, and orange. And we can do that with a function called array underscore combine. The first array you pass in is the array of keys. The second is the array of values. And you end up with an array similar 
to the colors array. But then let's say that you wanted to do the reverse. You have the colors array and you want to get only the keys. Well, there is the array underscore keys function that will give you an array of all of the keys. It is a new array. It is not modifying the original array at all. And then there is the array underscore values function, which gives you an array of just the values, which once again is a new array. It doesn't modify the original array. But then there are times that you want to flip the keys and the values so that the keys become the values and the values become the keys. And with that, you can use the array flip function, and we will see what that looks like in the console. So let's hop on over there. Let's run the basics.php. And there we go. We see that the keys are now blue, green, and orange. The values are sky, grass, and orange. Now, when working with arrays, it is very common to want to search that array, either for a particular value or a particular key. So let's look at the functions that PHP gives us to well, do just that, and there are several. So we're going to begin with just a simple array that has some string values, and then we have one numeric value. Now, this is important because whenever you use a function like in array, this is going to search an array for a particular value. So what we want to search for is the first thing we pass to that function. Then the array that we want to search inside is the second argument. And if 100 is inside of the values array, then we will simply output a message that says the array has 100. So let's go to the console. Let's run that and let's see what we get. The array has 100. I mean, that is obviously what we expected to see. However, let's do a search for 200 and let's see what happens. Now we have the string value of 200 inside of the array, but we don't have the actual numeric value of 200, but yet it still is true. The array has the value of 200. And that is because by default, the in array function doesn't care about type. If there is something that can be coerced into the numeric value of 200, then it is going to return true. So if you want a strict type and value check, you have to pass in a third argument, and that is true. The default is false. So in this case, whenever we go back and run this, we see that there is no message output because the array does not have a numeric value of 200. It has a string value of 200. Now, a similar function is called array search. And this gives us the key of a particular value. So once again, if we search the values array for the value of 100, then this will return the key of that value. So whenever we run this, we should see something output. And we do. We see that the key is 2. So we have 0, 1, and 2. Now, if we hadn't just talked about strict type and value checking, that might be a little surprising. But the array search function behaves very similar to the in array function in that it ignores the type. If we wanted a strict type check, then we would have to pass the value of true as the third argument, in which case we are going to see a different output. The key is four, because by checking for the numeric value of 100, the array has that value, but it has a key of four as opposed to a key of two. But what if we wanted to check if an array contains a particular key? Well, we have a function called array key exists. We would pass in the key that we wanted to check for, and then the array that we wanted to search in. And of course, if this is true, then the array has the key of zero. And whenever we run this, we will see a poorly formatted message, but we at least see that the message is there. It has the key of zero. However, if we search for a key of 10, well, then we aren't going to see that message because our array does not have a value with a key of 10. Now, when you are working with arrays, there are two very common things that you will find that you will need to do. One of those things is to filter the array. The second thing is going to essentially transform the array. It's a process that we call map. 
And these are very common whenever you are working with data that comes from the database. Now, yes, we are talking about filtering an array, which if you are working with a database, you of course want the database to filter the data as much as possible because that is what the database excels at. However, there are times when you can only filter the data so much with a SQL statement, in which case you have to programmatically filter out anything that you don't need. So for example, we have an array called people. This is a multi-dimensional array because it's an array that contains arrays. And this is to simulate the idea of working with a database. So we have fetched data and we have these records here. And we want to filter this down so that we only have the people that are in the state of Texas. And the array filter function makes it very easy to do that. So the first thing we need to pass to array filter is the array that we are going to be working with people. And then we have a callback function. And this is going to execute over every record inside of our people array. And we need to do one thing. We need to return a true or false value. If it's true, then whatever record is currently being worked with is going to end up in this new array that we are creating called Texas. If it is false, then that record is not going to be inside of this new array. So we want the person that have the state equal to Texas. That is going to give us a new array that contains only those records. And we can prove that by just printing that out to the console. So instead of an array of three elements, we will have an array of two elements and they will both have a state of Texas. So there we go. But we're not done here because this is information that we want to display on the page, but we only want to display the last name, comma, and then the first name. We don't need to display anything else. Now, of course, we can write a for loop or some other kind of loop to do that, but this is where the map operation is very useful because mapping allows us to take an existing array and transform it into another array. Now, I use that term transform and it makes it seem like that we are going to be modifying an array and we don't. We create a new array that contains the transformed data. So we're gonna call this names. And the parameters are backward in my opinion because if we look at array filter, we pass first the array that we want to work with, followed by the callback function. For the map, it's reversed. We pass in the callback function, and then we pass in the array that we want to work with. And in this case, we want to work with the Texas people. Now, this callback function needs to return the value that we want inside of this new names array. So this is going to be the last name, comma, first name. So we can simply return the last name with the first name. And we can print that out to the console so that we can see what that is going to look like. And if I typed everything correctly, then we should see, first of all, the array that we created for the Texas people. And then we have the array that contains just the names. And that's all well and good. However, we can make this a little bit cleaner so that instead of using our person array and specifying the last name and first name keys, what we can do is call extract and then pass in this person array. And what this is going to do is extract the keys and values from our person array into a set of variables. And the variables are the names of our keys. So we end up with a variable called ID, another one called first name, and another one called last name. So that means that we can clean this up considerably so that it looks more like this. And if we go back to the console and run this, we're going to see that we end up with the same results. Now that's all well and good, but we also want to sort this. We want it in alphabetical order. So the last thing we are going to do is sort our names array. Now this does not create a new array. This modifies the existing array so that it will sort it in alphabetical order. And also notice that it did not preserve the keys. If we look at the previous version of names, we can see that the key of zero is John Doe. The key of two is Jacob Davis. However, after we sort that array, 
we have whole new keys. The key of zero is for Jacob Davis. The key of one is for John Doe. Now, if we wanted to preserve those keys, we would need to use a different sorting function. It's called a sort. And if we go back to the console and run this again, we can see that the keys are preserved with their values. So Jacob Davis has a key of two. John Doe has a key of zero. Now, that may or may not matter to you. It really depends upon your use and if you need to preserve those keys. Now, of course, we have just scratched the surface of how you can process arrays in PHP. There are a ton of functions that you can use to work with arrays, and we just can't fit them all in here. But if you liked this video and you want to learn more about PHP, then please take a look at our PHP Fundamentals course. It is freely available, and I promise that by the end of the course, you will know everything that you need to get started building web applications with PHP. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.